Hey everybody, Johnny here. I've been working on this project at work where I have to render out a bunch of images for review by our marketing department. After rendering these two dozen images several times and renaming them each time to their appropriate names, I thought there might be a better way. What I wanted to show you in this video was a way to use what Blender calls application handlers. These are special hooks that you can use in a Python script to allow you to run custom code when certain events in Blender happen. So let's jump into it. Here I have a simple scene with Suzanne. I have five frames, and in each frame, Suzanne is facing a different angle. For the sake of this video, we're gonna keep it really simple. I need to render out each of these frames to a separate image. Of course, all I need to do is set my frame range from my beginning frame to my ending frame, and then render, and then render my animation. So here in my temp folder, I have my five images. Of course, if you're doing this and your frames aren't necessarily an animation, but say 25 different views of the same object, and those views need specific names, you don't want to have to go through and rename every file especially if you're going to have to go through multiple iterations. So to accomplish this programmatically, we're going to go over to our scripting tab. And in a new text window, I'm going to start up a script. Blender scripts start with the line import BPY. This lets our script access all of the components of Blender. The next thing our script needs is a function that's going to get run every time a certain event happens. This will be our event handler. To define a function, we use the keyword DEF for define, and then we give it a name. We're going to call this one frame change handler. And then in parentheses, we'll type the word scene. Because the type of handler we're going to use passes the scene to its function. On the next line, indented in four spaces, we can do whatever it is we want to do. In this case, we want to change what the name of our file is going to be. If we were going to do that using the interface, we would go here under the output properties, scroll down to output, and change this directory. Now, if you have an info window open, and you go ahead and change this, if you look over here, you'll see the Python command that was run. In this case, bpy.context.scene.render.filepath was set to equal c colon temp monkey. So what I'm going to do is click on this, press Ctrl C, go over to my script and press Ctrl V. And that's all we're going to do for the moment. Now we need to register this event handler. We do that by appending this function to the frame change pre handler. We do that with the command BPY dot app dot handlers dot frame change pre dot append and then the name of our function. So now when we run this script, this command will insert this function call. So now when we run this script, this command will make sure the frame change handler function gets called every time the frame change pre event happens. So when I run this script, it doesn't appear that anything has happened. However, if I go down to my output and put in some other value here, and then I go over to my 3D window and change the frame, you'll see that the output got changed back to C temp monkey. So let's take this a step further. Let's say I have a specific name I want to name each frame. In that case, I'm going to create an array of names that the frame change handler can choose from. I'll create that array with the name frame and then give it my list. Arrays in Python start with the number zero. And since our first frame is frame one, we need to give it an empty name for frame zero. Now I'll name my five frames. Once we have our list created, we can access this in our function. So in the output window, if you add text to the end of your path without putting a slash, that text becomes the beginning of the next file name. So here after the path, we're gonna add this information. Of course, we don't want the whole array, we just want one of the items. We want the item that's associated with the number of the frame that we're on. So how do we get that piece of information? Well, it's passed in with this scene object. 
if we look at the Blender Python API documentation and go to Types and scroll down to Scene, we can look at the data that's available to us in this scene object. And here there's a field called frame underscore current, which gives us the current frame. So if in these brackets we put scene dot frame current, that's going to take the number of the current frame, pass it to our frame array, and get out the name that we want, and then add that text to our path. Now we want to try this again but we've already registered the previous version of this handler with the frame change event. So we're gonna need to clear that previous one out. So before this statement, we're gonna type in bpy.app.handlers.framechangepre.clear. This will clear out any other event handlers that we've already registered and then re-add this one. I'll go ahead and run this script. And now if I come over here and change the frame, You'll see that when I'm on frame one, I get right one. Frame two is right two, frame three is center, frame four is left one, and frame five is left two. Now, if I go ahead and render this animation and go back to my temp folder, you'll see I now have a monkey subfolder. And in that, I have my five files named the way I wanted them. Now, depending on what types of renders you're gonna be doing, you may want to put other information into your output as well. In my case, I'm going to be rendering out versions in different sizes using the percent slider. So I'm going to want to group those together differently. I'm going to want a separate folder for each percentage that I use. So I'll want to add that to the path before the name. So with my info window open, I'm going to change this to 50%. And you'll see here that it changed the scene context dot render dot resolution percentage to 50. I'll copy this and I'm going to paste this into my function. But instead of setting it to something, I want to get its information. I'm going to call this perc for percentage and it's equal to the render resolution percentage. Now, one thing to watch out for is that we're trying to build a string or a set of characters for our path. Resolution percentage comes in as an integer. We can tell this because this says equals 50 and there's no quotes around the 50. So that means this is a number. Whereas here the file path has quotation marks around it. So it's a string. So we're gonna have to change this percentage into a string. We can do that very easily by putting a function call to str around our resolution percentage. So now perc is set to the string five zero. On this line, I can now say plus perc plus backslash backslash. So now I'm gonna have a monkey folder and then a folder named after the percentage size that I used and then my frame name. Let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. Again, I still have my monkey folder but now this time I have a folder called 50. And in that folder, I have my five files. If I come back into Blender and change my percentage to say 25% and re-render, you'll see I now have a folder called 25 with my five images. Of course, what you do with this is completely up to you. And different projects will probably have different requirements. But if you're doing multiple images using animation and you need those images named differently, this is a great way to do it and save yourself a bunch of time. The one thing you're gonna have to look out for though, is that these handler registrations only last for that Blender session. And so the next time that I open this file, I will have to run this script before I start doing my rendering for these actions to take over. But what's great about that is that you can have a different setup for every file and you don't have to worry about them running over each other. I hope this tip gives you some ideas how you can make your workflow a lot more efficient and remove a lot of the grunt work of renaming files every time you render. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tip and I hope it inspires you to make some awesome new scripts. So until next time, I'll catch you later.